My name is Patrick James Lynch. Uh, I'm an actor, writer, and producer living with severe hemophilia. Uh, I'm a co-founder of Believe Digi, along with my partner in crime, Ryan, who's walking around taking pictures, uh, who is putting on tonight's event in partnership with National Cornerstone Healthcare Services. Uh, NCHS is a specialty pharmacy and home care service provider. They're renewing their commitment to patients in the Northeast, and they wanted to do so at an inspiring and dynamic event. So they asked us to help them do that. Um, Andy, Edgar, Mary, and Carolyn are in the back there from NCHS. If you have any questions about who they are, what they do, those are the folks to ask. Uh, the theme for tonight is overcoming obstacles and powering through them to achieve great things. And we have four fantastic speakers, two from within our bleeding disorders community and two from outside of it to speak to that point. Overcoming obstacles to achieve great things. So I'll start right here with Dean. Um, can you tell us a little bit about where you were in your preparation to potentially represent your country for the Olympics and what happened to derail that? Graduated uh, college as uh, one of the top high jumpers um, in the nation. Um, so now I'm getting ready to go pro. And then uh, I just started having like really, really sharp pains in my knee. So my ticket, everything was flipped. I'm having like a patella tendonitis, but it was just like a really high case. And what it is with patella tendonitis and the inflammation of the patella tendon, but sometimes it just gets so painful where you can't even move. Like just step, walk in, go up the stairs, it just, it's excruciating. So because of that, it was like, I was this close and um, everything just got shot down. And the worst part of it is that um, what won trials in my country was seven foot, and I'm a seven two high jumper. So my personal best would have gotten me where I needed to be. I had to take a year off, well more than a year, and I'm just now like getting back into the swing of things. I had my second competition in the past weekend at the um, Gotham Cup, and I took second place. In terms of just like the two year plan, it's a, it's a long and hard road. It requires a tremendous amount of work. I have to be in the gym five times a week, um, and then two days of recovery. Um, in addition to that, I own this fitness company and I'm constantly um, trying to make this um, fitness company grow. In addition to that, I coach um, I coach uh, all girls uh, school on their pretty side, Nightingale. And in addition to that, I'm the director of game operations for St. Francis College. And in addition to that, so I mean, I do a tremendous amount, but the um, the key thing is I believe in myself and I know what I want and I'm progressively realizing my worthy ideal, which is what I think is important, and that is my definition of success, which was taken from Earl Nightingale. It's a progressive realization of a worthy ideal. So the fact that you're progressively realizing something, whatever goal it is that you set for yourself, um, if you never exercised before, if you, you want to go to, say, a top prestigious college, or trying to break into a new job, you're trying to go for a uh, CEO position, the fact that you're progressively re realizing that ideal, that means you are successful. So once you know exactly what you want to do, and then you're going towards that goal, that is, in fact, success. So, I'm 24, and I was diagnosed when I was an infant, luckily, because I had a family history of it, which has really benefited my treatment and my life. But when I was younger, say a middle schooler, the fact that I was in and out of school, everyone knows middle school girls are the worst. <laughs> well, if you're not there, you're out. And being in and out of school with nosebleeds and just any kind of bleed is really, it's hard. And I would keep it to myself, which probably wasn't the best thing. And then throughout each stage of my life, there's been new obstacles. So being a woman with bumble runs, my periods have almost killed me multiple times. At the age of 20, I found out that if my bleeding did not stop, there was a chance I would get a hysterectomy. Mm -hmm. At 20, that's not something you want to hear. Mm -hmm. Or that, or the option of being put into menopause again at 20. No one wants that. So I found that I kept it to myself because I wanted to be strong. He said, man up. I wanted to man up in a way because I didn't want to show my weakness, and that was a really hard thing to overcome and be open with and just say, you know what, this is what's happening. This is why I can't come to class. This is why I couldn't do this or this. I have an older brother and sister who both have homework runs as well. 
So they are a great support system for me personally, and I really feel like we've all been each other's support system at one time or another. We all know how it feels. It's hard for someone who doesn't have an eating disorder to know what it's like to have a six hour nosebleed and how you feel after that. So they come to me, and it was just, it was nice to know that they were there for that. You know, I mean, a lot of it is, is trying to just be yourself and not trying to hide from your chronic illness. Um, and, and when you're young, you, you do a little bit of that because you want to work and you don't want to necessarily have it uh, limit your progress in life. Um, so I never told an employer when I was hired um, that I had hemophilia you know, before they would hire me because then they would just choose the other resume. But I would tell the employer within a year of being hired because at that point I probably had proven myself and was invaluable and I've never lost a job and, and um, you know never really had that kind of transition all of an available employee. Uh, so standing up and being that and then you know it's kind of working a little harder than everybody else has to work uh, to prove yourself. Um, you really have to uh, put yourself out there, go that extra mile, do that extra thing, uh, because once people know you have a chronic illness, they're looking for you to slack off a little bit or not. So I was willing to put myself out there, and I've always been kind of um, uh, determined uh, in many ways uh, to uh, you know not have the chronic illness impede my life. And, and over my years as a Camp director, which is my favorite title, my time in, in affiliate. That's what I've tried to instill in my kids. Is like, you know what? When you're sitting in that chair in a classroom, no one cares you have team affiliate. They can't even see it. <laughs> you know, you know, you got a little breast disease. You can't even see it. Okay, so you better compete. Okay, you better have the chops to compete. So when you came to our camp, I never let you win unless you won. Okay. And um, we competed hard. I used to call it, my philosophy was throw the ball, catch the ball, shoot the ball, hit the ball. Because after you were with us, you were not going to be the last person picked on the plate. I, I have been very fortunate to be successful pretty much right off the bat in an industry that's really difficult to be successful in. And I was thinking about obstacles ever since we talked, and I think the, one of the reasons that I've been so successful is I never look, when I have an obstacle, I can look at it as an obstacle until afterwards. And then I thought, wow, I really, I did a good thing there. My husband is also, we met on the show, so he's also an actor, and that's all he's ever done his whole life. So uh, when I found out, I was already starting to stress after about six months of not working, neither of us working, and neither of us having a college degree or anything to fall back on. Um, and then I got pregnant, and I immediately went into a tailspin. I, I have panic disorder where, you know, panic attacks come on for no reason. Now they had a reason. <laughs> <laughs> And it was really scary because I was pregnant and I didn't want to take medicine while being, you know, I looked up, researched everything and the medicines that you take don't look good for pregnant women, so I didn't take them and I was really, really in a dark place. And it really, you know, my thought about, oh, God will come through, you know, I'll get a pilot or something, and it wasn't what I thought it was going to be, but the fact I feel like I overcame a big obstacle in the fact that I just, I recognize that it is still a blessing and it may not be exactly what I want to do right now, but um, that's life, you know, you have to take what's given to you and, and it still was an amazing um, little gift in kind of a scary time and it helped me get rid of the anxiety, which is, you know, when you have anxiety, you'll do anything to get rid of it. I'm gonna get a pilot right at the last second. God's gonna pull through and I'm gonna get it and I'm gonna make my SAG payment and we're gonna get our insurance and mm -hmm. nothing happened. And I had about two weeks left. And I'm like, okay. 
you know, that's kind of how my life had always gone. I would think positively, picture it happening, and it would happen. And it didn't happen. But it did happen in a different way. <laughs> because I got a call from one of the hairstylists that I worked with on As World Turns. She works at Jerry Springer. And she said, hey, I think you need, it's time for you to get a real job. I'm like, okay, what do you want me to do here? <laughs> she said, no, Steve Wilkos needs an assistant. And he, would, if you don't know who he is, he was Jerry Springer's uh, former bodyguard, and he got his own show about seven years ago, so he has his own talk show. And she said he needs an assistant, you know, it's pretty good money, the health benefits are amazing, and I was like, okay, I'm going to help him. If he was an actor, I don't think I could do it, but I'm going to go be someone's assistant. So that's what I've been doing for the past, I don't know, three or four months. Um, and it's, you know, it's been a humbling experience. It's a great job. People are amazing. And that's what I really realized. It's, it's afforded me to the opportunity to be able to provide for my family. You said earlier, I still want to go after my dream. And part of me thinks like, what are you talking about? Like. 1,366 episodes as the world turns. I mean, you are in the 1% of people who go after yeah. jobs. But what's beautiful is that because that landscape changed so drastically, it, it forced you to have to do something that a, not that many people at that 1% level have to do, which is rethink things. Right. Because it wasn't just going to be there for forever. And that's really interesting. And you say the word humbling. I think that's beautiful and it, it's important. I think it's good to hear sometimes People, especially people who are on TV that we see and, and oh they're successful we you don't know everything that goes into yeah. them getting there and that goes for anyone who we look at and say that's a successful part right. sure but a lot of obstacles will come along that path so that's super valuable and that's why you're here <laughs>